This is Egypt, home to the Great Pyramids of Giza and the Great Sphinx, but all that aside, this is a Bahia formation, a geologic formation in Egypt with some of the biggest animals to have ever walked the earth. So what was it like there, what lived there and how big could the animals really get? So a bit of background information. Fossils discovered in the Bahari Formation date back from 95 to 100 million years ago during the Cretaceous period, or the Selimanian age to be more exact. Also, the Sahara was not the desert it is today. There was a large, shallow sea covering most of North Africa, spreading far into where the Sahara is now, stopping only at the base of the Atlas Mountains in the west and the Red Sea hills in the east. So what was it like there? The Bahia Formation was dominated by the xerophytic tree fern, Vyxelia. This xerophyte is suggestive of a dry tropical climate. For those of you who do not know what a xerophyte is, a xerophyte is a species of plant that has adaptations to survive in an environment with little liquid water. A present day example of a xerophyte is a cactus. Another extinct genus of fern which was discovered in the Bahari Formation was Cladophlebis. Cladophlebis was a leptosporangiate fern which has been discovered worldwide and grew from 72 to 299 million years ago. So what lived there? I am going to talk about two different ecosystems in the Bahari Formation. The primarily terrestrial one and the primarily aquatic one. The first dinosaur that I am going to talk about is Paralotitan. Paralotitan was a titanosaur, which was discovered in coastal deposits of the Bahia Formation. Paralotitan was one of the largest dinosaurs ever discovered, measuring 27 metres long and it had a mass of 30 metric tonnes. Unfortunately, there is limited fossil evidence, however, some large complete humeri have been discovered. A complete right humerus measured 1.69 metres long, which at the time of discovery was the longest known in a Cretaceous sauropod. This was surpassed in 2016 with the discovery of Notta Colossus, which had a 1.76 metre humerus. The scavenged skeleton of this herbivorous dinosaur was preserved in tidal flats deposits, containing in the form of fossil leaves and root systems, a mangrove vegetation of seed ferns, and Vyxelia. The mangrove ecosystem it inhabited was situated along the southern shore of the Tethys Sea. Paralotitan is the first dinosaur demonstrated to have inhabited a mangrove habitat. It lived at approximately the same time and place as giant predators Carcharodontosaurus, Spinosaurus and the sauropod Egyptosaurus. The next dinosaur that I am going to talk about is Carcharodontosaurus. Carcharodontosaurus was a genus of Carcharodontosaurid dinosaur first discovered in the Bahari Formation. It is currently known to include two species, Carcharodontosaurus saharicus and Carcharodontosaurus iguidensis. However, I will only talk about the larger species, Carcharodontosaurus saharicus, as Carcharodontosaurus iguidensis has yet to have been discovered in the Bahari Formation. Carcharodontosaurus saharicus was one of the largest carnivorous dinosaurs, measuring 12.8 metres long and it had a mass of 7.8 metric tonnes. This dinosaur had extremely strong jaw and neck muscles. Carcharodontosaurus was able to lift animals weighing a maximum of 424 kilograms in its jaws based on the strength of its jaws, neck and its centre of mass. Carcharodontosaurus was first discovered in the Bahari Formation in 1914, but described as Carcharodontosaurus in 1931. Unfortunately, these fossils, along with a lot of other Bahari Formation fossils, were destroyed in the Allied bombing of Munich during World War II, 1944 to be precise. The last dinosaur that I am going to talk about in great detail is Spinosaurus. Spinosaurus was the most abundant dinosaur found in the Bahari Formation. It was the largest carnivorous dinosaur known, measuring 15 to 16 metres long, 
and it had a mass of 6.4 to 7.5 metric tons. This genus was first known from remains discovered in the Bahia Formation by Richard Mark Graf in 1912 and described by the German paleontologist Ernst Dromer in 1915. These fossils, along with a lot of other Bahia Formation fossils, were destroyed in the Allied bombing of Munich in World War II. Fortunately, additional material has come to light in the early 21st century. Spinosaurus is known to have eaten fish, and most scientists believe that it hunted both terrestrial and aquatic prey. Evidence suggests that it was highly semi-aquatic and lived both on land and in water as modern crocodilians do. Spinosaurus's leg bones had osteosclerosis, meaning that it had a high bone density, allowing for better buoyancy control, and the paddle-like tail was likely used for underwater propulsion. Multiple functions have been put forward for the dorsal sail, including thermal regulation and display, either to intimidate rivals or attract mates. Spinosaurus lived in a humid environment of tidal flats and mangrove forests, alongside many other dinosaurs, as well as fish, crocodile morphs, lizards, turtles, pterosaurs, and plesiosaurs. However, those are not all of the dinosaurs discovered in the Baharia Formation. Another theropod dinosaur found there was Baharisaurus, a medium-sized carnivore of uncertain affinities. Also, there lived a Spinosaurid called Sigil Massasaurus, the sister taxon of Spinosaurus, which may even be synonymous to Spinosaurus. For those of you who do not know what a sister taxon is, a sister taxon is a phylogenetic term denoting the closest relative of another given unit in an evolutionary tree. Furthermore, a 15 metre long titanosaur by the name of Egyptosaurus was discovered in the Baharia Formation. However, all of these fossils, except for some fragments, were destroyed during World War II. In addition, an indeterminate theropod, once believed to have been Alaphosaurus, have been found there. Finally, an unnamed Rabacosaurid, once believed to be Decreosaurus, was discovered there. How could those paleontologists have messed that up so badly? Firstly, Decreosaurus was a Decreosaurid, not a Rabacosaurid. Secondly, it was discovered in the Tendaguru Formation in Tanzania, rather than the Baharia Formation. This couldn't have gone any more wrong. Oh wait, Decreosaurus lived during the Jurassic period. What were these paleontologists thinking? The worst part is, the last two issues also go for Alaphosaurus. Paleontologists involved in this, get your act together and stop making dumb mistakes like this. Now we know what dinosaurs live there. But what else lived underwater? The first animal that I am going to talk about is Stomatosuchus. Stomatosuchus is a 10 metre long Stomatosuchid Neosuchian from the Baharia Formation. Unlike most other crocodile forms, it is difficult to determine what exactly Stomatosuchus ate. Its flattened skull had a long, flat, lid-like snout which was lined with small, conical teeth. The mandible may have been toothless and may have supported a pelican-like throat pouch. The type, and only, specimen of Stomatosuchus consists of a partial skull and two caudal, or tail, vertebrae. The only known specimen, which was collected by Ernst Stromer's Egyptian expedition, was unfortunately obliterated when the Munich Museum was destroyed during an Allied bombing raid in 1944. Only photographs remain. The last reptile that I am going to talk about in great detail is Aperto temporalis. Aperto temporalis was a bothermidid turtle which was named in 1934 by Ernst Stromer for a specimen. 
1912, VIII 93, consisting only of a fragmentary skull destroyed during World War II. No more remains have been found since. The specimen was found in the Baharia Formation of Egypt. It had a carapace, or shell, length of 60 centimetres, making it the largest known turtle discovered in the Baharia Formation to date. Along with a good amount of aquatic reptiles, a lot of fish fossils were discovered in the Baharia Formation. There were two extant classes of fish in the Baharia Formation. Chondrichthys, cartilaginous fish, and Osteichthys, bony fish. I will start with the Osteichthys, kicking it all off with Paranogmius. Paranogmius was an extinct genus of prehistoric bony fish, first discovered in the Baharia Formation. It is known from a single vertebra which was destroyed during World War II, and since then, no more fossils have been discovered. It may have been up to 4 metres long when fully grown, although this is just a very rough estimate. The next genus of bony fish that I am going to talk about is Morsonia. Morsonia is an extinct genus of prehistoric coelocanth, and it was the largest of its group, ranging from 3.5 metres up to 6.3 metres long. Morsonia was first described by a British paleontologist, Arthur Smith Woodward in 1907. The type species is Morsonia gigas and seven other species have been described since. However, only one species has been discovered in the Baharia Formation. That is Morsonia libica, which is considered a signature taxon of the formation. The last genus of a bony fish that I am going to talk about is Boetitis. Boetitis is an extinct genus of giant polypterid from the Baharia Formation of Egypt. It is known from several ectoterygoid bones and some sparse scales. Compared to modern polypterids, Boetitis was enormous and the scales are unusually large too. These remains suggest that the living animal may have been up to 300 centimetres in length. It also had 14 teeth in the main tooth row. Now I am going to talk about the other extant class of fish in the Baharia Formation. Chrondichthyes, aka cartilaginous fish. I am going to talk about the fish in this picture. The fish in this picture is called Onchopristis. Onchopristis is an extinct genus of giant sclerorhynchid from the Baharia Formation. It had an elongated snout lined laterally with barbed teeth, or denticles. There are two known species of Onchopristis. Onchopristis numidus and Onchopristis dunclay. However, only Onchopristis numidus has been discovered in the Baharia Formation. The rostrum, or snout, was around 1 to 2 metres long, lined with barbed teeth or denticles. In the type species, Onchopristis numidus, each tooth had one barb, but in Onchopristis dunclay, there were 2 to 5 barbs on each tooth. This fish was between 5 and 6 metres long. As with modern sawfish, Onchopristus' eyes were on top of its head to spot predators rather than prey, and its mouth and gills were under its body. The rostrum most likely would have had electroreceptors to detect food in the water below them, like most modern sharks and some rays. Onchopristus may have raked through the riverbed to find and then eat prey. It is thought that some Onchopristus may have migrated up rivers to breed. At the height of the breeding season, Pisivores, like Spinosaurus, may have preyed upon them. Other animals that lived there were an indeterminate polycotylid, once believed to be Leptoclidus, 
a shark called Squally Corax, and a strange looking shark similar to a goblin shark called Scapanorhynchus. But these two sharks will have their own separate video. I hope you have enjoyed this video. This was a lot of fun recording. Please like and subscribe. And until next time, goodbye.